Let's look at some sacrifice throws, Sutemiwaza, and guard techniques of Hamada Shori. The first technique we're going to look at is her Tomo Anage. She uses Tomo Anage here to set up a Newaza situation. She gets into a closed guard position and she does a good job of pushing her opponent's head across and reaching up, grabbing the belt, then transitioning with this Obi Tori Gaishi into a pinning position. And the thing I love about this clip is the reaction of the two coaches. The coach on the left, he's not having a good day, but the other guy, he can see the brighter side of life, even as his athlete is being pinned to the mat. He's got that sly, cheeky grin on his face. We'll have another look at the Tomo Anage. Notice the left leg positioning on this Tomo Anage. It's a little unusual. She goes ankle to ankle to help elevate the opponent's leg and then transitions by moving that left leg onto her opponent's hips. Now we're going to see Hamada being outgripped and thrown by Madeline Malonga and transition to a Tomo Anage from Newaza. So there's the throw. The opponent stands trying to force Mate, but Hamada transitions quickly into the Tomo Anage. This time Hamada is going to go for an armbar, but Malonga defends well and is able to pull away. And Hamada doesn't transition to another attack, so Mate is called. This match was from the 2019 World Championships. Let's look at a similar position that occurred in 2020 and we can see how Hamada's Newaza has advanced. So she goes for a Tomo Anage and she ends up behind her opponent in what's called a crab ride position in wrestling. And she's able to knock her opponent to the mat and then as she transitions to Tate Shihogatame, the referee has already called Mate and the match is stopped. So you can see from this clip just how difficult it is to be a Newaza specialist in Judo. These refs call Mate quickly. So this one is going to be a Yoko Tomoenage. Yoko Tomoenage gets up, grabs the belt. There's a bit of a scramble, but she's able to force the Newaza situation. Now she's going to work on turning her opponent, but the Korean judoka does a great job by cartwheeling out of this one. She cartwheels out before Hamada has time to insert the leg hook. Now Hamada responds immediately and is able to put the Koreans back on the mat. However, the ref once again had called Mate. So notice here how the Koreans cartwheel begins before Hamada is able to connect her right leg hook. If she'd been able to connect that hook, she would have been able to follow the Korean. Now this one we're going to see what I would call an unusual variation of Ukiwaza. It's not really a throw attempt, but it does force a Newaza situation here. You see this type of movement quite commonly in grappling and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as a guard pulling technique. The Korean does a good job here once again. See how she's able to control Hamada's left hand. So Hamada's forced to insert her leg hooks and move into this sweeping position which off balances the Korean who has to give up her control of Hamada's judogi. But once again the Korean is able to force a mate situation. So the Korean did a very good job here of avoiding and surviving Nawaza situations. This time Hamada tries to go into a leg entanglement 
the ref calls Mate straight away. Now this one I believe is the finishing sequence to this match. So the Korean tries an Uchimata. Amada in a very familiar position. She's going to off balance. Look to turn the opponent. Now she has to pass the guard. And here is the Hamada Shori pin win. So one of my goals for this video is to show you just how difficult it is to play guard in judo. Referees are very quick to call mate. So life as a Newaza specialist isn't easy. But if you're really good at Newaza, you can win a lot of matches. We're going to see a sweep by Hamada Shuri. She attempts a sumigaishi, transitions into this tripod sweep. However, the referee had already called Mate. She, she pulls the, the opponent's head down, gets a sumigaishi, and moves straight into Tate Shiho Gatame for the pin. Hamada Shori is the world judo champion, Olympic judo champion. He's a two-time world sambo champion. But I think her next world title could be in tug of war and you'll see why in a moment here. So the French judoka thinks they have a chance of scoring on Hamada here and they end up very surprised indeed when Hamada pulls guard here. Pulls guard, Ashigarami, tripod sweep. Now we have tug of war. It's like a reverse sumo match. And here is the off balancing. She moves to Tate Shiho Gatame or mount as it's called in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And the surprising thing here is that there is a tap. So I'm not sure whether there was pressure on the arm or whether the French judoka had just had enough of tug of war and judo. Here we're gonna see her get shut down in close guard. So there's a sumi gaishi attempt. She moves into close guard. She's looking to set up the Tomoenage. The opponent's able to sit her weight towards her butt and is not thrown and Mate is called. Here is an interesting tactic that I had never seen before. She's going to spin all the way underneath her opponent's arm to break her opponent's grip. And then she transitions first into this Ashigarami position, then into guard. And this time Mate is not called. She's able to get up to her feet she drags her opponent along the mat on her head and then gets into this familiar kimura gaishi position and as her opponent is pinned she finishes her with a submission with the ude garami So here we're going to see her attempt a similar Ashigarami position. She gets the Ashigarami sweep and now she's looking to do what you've seen her do a few times already here. Turn the opponent and pass the half guard. So she's passing the guard here but she loses control of the opponent's elbow. She's off balanced, but the opponent's in full base here and her arm is straight. She's tr starting to try to turn the arm, but because there's no strong connection and control of the opponent's shoulder, 
it's very easy for her opponent to get free. So the next thing we're going to look at is an armbar transition into the legs. You see this a lot of the time in grappling when an armbar fails, but you don't see it much in judo. So this armbar to the legs transition is recommended by the world's most famous grappling coach, John Danaher. But in judo, it results in a quick mate call. They usually experiment with rule changes after each Olympic cycle, so I'm hoping that we'll see referees understanding that players are transitioning through to different Newaza techniques. And I'm also hoping we see referees allow action to flow more freely from Newaza to Tachiwaza. I think judo is at its most exciting when you see players transitioning from Newaza to Tachiwaza. I think it's a lot more exciting than just watching grip battles. So this is the final sequence of this match and we see a lot of transitions. So it hits the ground. First Hamada's looking for some kind of Okuri Eri Jimmy perhaps and now she's knocked her opponent back down to the ground. The opponent's trying to rebuild base. Hamada appears to have the arm locked in. So he, this time she's bent the arm. Earlier we saw her have trouble as she had the arm straight as she was trying to get the turn. This is a match we saw earlier in the video when we saw that crab ride position. And this one's not going to finish with Nawaza, it's going to be Itachiwaza Uchimata Ippon. So Hamada Shuri likes to try to force her opponents off the tatami. It's a way of forcing your opponents to take risks. And Hamada's good at taking advantage of opponents that are beginning to take risks. So we're going to see her opponent start to attack as she gets close to being forced out and Hamada finishes with the Uchimata Ippon. Subscribe for more non-stop Newaza and more Hamada Shori.